Hey coders, I'm here to take you today on a walkthrough on how to deploy your basic web apps to Heroku. Heroku is a cloud platform that gives us some server allocated server space actually built on top of AWS or Amazon Web Services that allows us to deploy our servers to their servers. That way we have a deployed version of our web app that we can show off in our portfolios to our friends and family and to potential employers. Um, it's different in AWS and a few other platforms that we can use in the sense that it is a platform as a service, meaning we get some allocated server space to run our code then and there, but we don't have access to the underlying infrastructure like we would on AWS. This makes it so we might have some smaller and more like stringent um, scalability for Heroku, but makes it very easy to get up and running off the ground as you don't need to know much. Um, so their website has a free tier, which is actually pretty good for building up your portfolio of deployed projects. All you have to do is go sign up and it should be absolutely free once you get through this process. Authenticate your email and confirm yourself with the reCAPTCHA and you should be good to go. Once you validate all that stuff, you should be on your dashboard. Mine has a few deployed web apps I've done for friends or students or to show off with. Um, if you don't have anything here, that's probably normal. And what you're going to actually want to be doing is setting up your profile as well as checking out the documentation for Heroku. Now you can actually deploy a web app via your Git, a GitHub repository and using um, a point and click GUI for their backend. But I found it actually much easier to control and more customizable if you use the Heroku CLI. Uh, by this point in the curriculum, you should have Node and NPM installed on your computer. And what you're going to be wanting to do is head down to this little command here of npm install g, which is a global flag, again, for making sure we can utilize this across any directory in our terminal, and install Heroku. So npm install g Heroku. That will just um, install the, the CLI on our computers. And you can always double check your version by doing Heroku dash dash version. If it reports something back, you're probably in the clear and good to go. From there, you have to run this Heroku login command at least one time after installation and verifying your installation. That way you can log yourself in and receive a token telling your uh, your computer and Heroku that you are a verified and logged in user so you can create web apps and deploy to those web apps. Heroku actually uses Git as its deployment um, structure. So what you actually end up doing in the sense is you have to have a GitHub repo it has to have a master branch unless you specify otherwise, and you have to have your most latest code pushed to it. From there, all you have to do is allow Heroku to essentially run a Git clone of that master branch. It runs an NPM install on its servers, and after that, it runs whatever script you want it to. Typically, it looks for an NPM run start by default, but you can specify it to run other things. There's actually several bits of customization you can do using Heroku. And the reference material along with the documentation should cover most of it. For example, you can specify what version of Node and NPM you need to run in case a newer version might break your current code base. You can specify certain scripts to run before and after installing dependencies. Um, you can choose to run certain scripts custom if they happen to visit your website or through some other source. Uh, there's a whole host of things you can do. So just picking around their documentation to find some uh, use case you might need would be beneficial. I've only used a few of these, but it's always cool to see new things you can do with them. Uh, they will assign you a random uh, application name, which you can either change later, or you can look up the documentation on how to create a custom one out the gate. And it works in the same sense of you have a Git remote, you have a Heroku Git remote that you can always remove and change later that you're pushing to, right? So with that being said, we, I already have the Heroku CLI installed on my machine. It's returning a version correctly and I'm already logged in. So I won't be going over the steps in this demo in order to keep it a bit shorter. As of right now, my terminal is running the bare bones template that we've been using in this entire section of the curriculum, which should be a link in the description of this video, or you can find it in our curriculum if you are a gravity and covalent student. Um, it just runs a very basic hello world at the moment here. 
on local 3000, all it does is it has an API route and an express server with a React front end. And that is by no means any kind of requirement for deploying to Heroku. Um, if you're using a Create React app, for instance, if you just have a front end React app application that you're trying to deploy, all you have to do is specify whether you're using NPM or Yarn because the current versions of Create React app typically have both those um, files inside, you'll have to delete one of them and push that to GitHub with the deleted file out of the way. So if you want yarn, you delete your package lock. If you want NPM, you delete your yarn lock. That's as easy as that. And from there, without even specifying what script to run, Create React App will deploy and run right away on Heroku. Um, I'm going to be taking you through a little rundown here on how this is going to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that terminal from running my bare bones template, and I'm going to show you some things inside of here. Um, regardless of what we have on our front end, it doesn't really matter. If it's just an HTML page with some jQuery JavaScript files that we've written with some CSS, that's fine. Uh, if it's a React front end, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. At a bare minimum, all you need to have is some kind of running backend server. In this curriculum, we talk about Node and, in particular, Express. And it needs to at least to create a new Express server. It needs to serve some static files, such as an index.html, so you can actually load something in the browser when someone goes to look at your web app. And you have to specify that it can fill in this port variable via an environment variable. And then it needs to be able to listen on that port that it is assigned. Because more than likely, the server space we have has port 3000 taken up. So it would be best practice to let it allow Heroku to define what port it needs to run on. That way it can run on it successfully without coinciding with somebody else's app and cause the whole thing to come crashing down. At a bare minimum, that's all it needs to have. We don't need to have this API router with anything else on it. And our front end, again, doesn't matter. As long as you're serving some kind of public file in the end, that's all you need. So in the side of this package JSON, this is where we can add our um, extra, eh, extra, what's it called? customization if we need it, meaning this is where we can add our scripts to do something after installing dependencies, after cleaning dependencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and with the template at the moment, it happens to build and output the server.js, which is a compiled version of our server, along with a app.js bundle file. That's all our React code bundled up into one file. Those are the two things you're going to need to have built. Um, for this particular demo, all that happens is I do an npm run dev on my local server. It runs this watch build. It builds the dist and the public JS, app JS, and I know those work. So when I deploy this to Heroku, it's all it's going to do is run this node on the server, which should serve the static file, which should have my app.js with it, which is all of my transpiled React code. And in order to specify Heroku, uh, in order to tell it which script we want it to run when we visit this through the web, we actually have to include a new file here called a capital P proc file. And there's no extension on this, and you'll notice the Heroku icon here in my VS Code automatically pops up. And no quotes here, we do web colon and a space and tell it npm run start, because that is a script I want it to run when I visit this web app from the web. And that is all you need to get this up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this to a repository in my GitHub. We'll call it deploy walkthrough. We're going to create the repository and go ahead and link this guy up. We'll just do our normal steps in git here. I'll do a git init, git add all. And we'll add our remote and then do a git push origin master. And that should go ahead and get everything up and into our GitHub repository here. And like I said earlier, we need at least this by default a master branch with everything pushed in there and ready to go. Okay, so now because I have the Heroku CLI, I can go ahead and type in Heroku create, which will create that web app for me. And it should tie these remotes together successfully. And from there, all we need to do is, is as simple as git push Heroku master. And depending on the size of your projects, this build process could sometimes take a while. But you'll notice it essentially clones our Node.js web app and it detects it. Um, it sets some Node environment variables such as production and some other things happening under the hood. 
it's going to determine if we have any kind of specific node or NPM engine. And from there, it's going to build our dependencies, run our scripts, and clear out our dev dependencies. So make sure that if you have anything in your dev dependencies by mistake that your app has to run on, you move them into regular dependencies or include them in the pre-build process. Looks like the build has succeeded, which is a miracle because I figured there'd be something coming crashing down in this video. It deploys it to that app. Verifying deploy done, awesome. And we have this nice little name of Serene Falls here, appropriate name for this time of night. Very serene indeed. And with our Heroku CLI, we can actually, inside of our directory, go ahead and type Heroku open, and it will open a link to um, our Serene Falls 64143.herokuapp.com automatically for us in our browser. And there it is. There is our Serene Falls deployed bare bones template out in the real world for observation. I will probably leave this link up and I'll put it in the description of this video or below this video in Gravity. And you'll be able to mess with it and check it out and confirm that indeed it deploys with no trouble whatsoever. If you have any kind of errors during deployment, you can actually go to the Heroku dashboard and check out your logs to see if something has occurred. And you also have this command in your terminal called Heroku logs. And you specifically want the dash dash tail flag to show me the latest things in the console log. And this will be how you test your console log in deployment. So if you do have some server stuff logging and you're wondering why it's failing in deployment, but not locally, um, you can actually use this Heroku logs tail to see what your errors are in your console log. And that is really about it to deploy into Heroku. It is remarkably simple. And like I said, it is a great way to get something up and running very quickly so you can play with it on multiple devices. So something I typically use this for is deploying it quickly to just some unnamed Heroku app and testing it on my phone, on my wife's tablet, my other laptop, computers, and things like that, just so you can get an idea of what your web app might look like on different devices and how it behaves on those devices. And from there, um, the best thing you can do is if you're getting any kind of issues is just to check your build process, check your build logs, and if anything's messing up, just look at the documentation for Heroku and see if there's something you can specify that you missed. And that really just about wraps it up for deploying Heroku. In the next video, we'll talk about how you can provision your own database for this very web app. So stay tuned for that. If there's any questions about generic or general deployment to Heroku, um, leave the comment or leave the questions in the comments below or in Gravity, and we'll be happy to help answer them. Other than that, I hope you'll have an awesome day and say hello to the world with your own web apps. Bye.